So in this part, I'm going to be teaching you new user registration. How do you register a new user in your application? Right now, login works because I've added a user um, by hard coding. I mean, I added this user to the database, but if I go to sign up and enter some user details, for instance, I enter some user details here, and enter some username and password, you see that if I try to register, it doesn't work because we've not implemented the functionality for user registration. Actually, you need a user to be registered before the user will be able to log in. So let's go fix it uh, this time. Um, I also would like to recommend you subscribe to my channel. You also leave me a comment if you have some comments uh, for me. And in this particular tutorial, I don't know if I have a step-by-step -step available, but look through my website. I'm going to put a link to Spring Security generally. Maybe you can see user registration. Outside that, just follow this simple tutorial I'm going to be making now and let's add user registration. All right, so we have this, um, this page. So the first thing I'd like us to do is to include first name and last name because if a user is registering, you need to have him enter first name and last name. So I'm simply going to say private string uh, first name and private uh, string last name, okay? Okay, so once you do this, you also need to check that in your registration page, you have exactly the same field in the registration page. So if I go to the template, the register template, I should have, um, I mean, the names, like the name of the field is going to be first name, the name is going to be last name, uh, you have username and password. That is the name field, make sure the name attribute, okay? And that is what you should do. Then we also want to check that we have the action of the form should go to slash user slash add new. Now, if I go to the user controller, we have a number of things. We don't have the add new right here. So the user controller should be able to manage only the users, okay? So in this case, slash login, slash the register, I think I should move them to another controller. So let me create a new controller. I'm going to call this controller security controller. And I would like to move the register and login to this place so that the user controller will only be managing the user. So I'll controller annotation, and then I'm going to move from here. I'm going to move this. Actually, I'm going to move all of them away from here. So I'm going to cut this out from here and put it right here, okay. Now, in the user controller now, what do we have? We should have the endpoint that comes from add new user right here, okay? But before then, we're gonna check our user repository to make sure that it's working. So our user repository is already existing, but we also need a user service because we normally have uh, need a business layer which is a service, so I'm going to add a new class inside the service. I'm going to add, call it user service, okay? So basically this user service interfaces with the repository. So I'm going to um, call it um, annotate with add service annotation. And now this user service actually gets data from the repository. So I'm going to say add auto wire. I'm going to wire this repository into this uh, service. So um, so the private user repository, user repository, and we are now going to use this repository to add new user. Okay, so um, yeah, so to, to add a new user, we need to go to the controller. Yeah, this is fine. So we need to kind of select like find all, find by ID, delete, and save. For now, we want to add uh, only add a user. So let's focus on saving the user. But for now, we are not talking about managing user. We're going to be doing that when we do roles and um, user roles and um, privileges and a yeah, role-based authentication. Hope you don't mind. I'm putting back my camera uh, here. All right. So I'm going to say add new user. So I'm going to say public void saved and it's going to take a user object 
user user and we're simply going to call the repository to save the user repository but before then we are going to set the password uh, using the password encoder so we are going to encode the password before we are going to save this user so to encode the password i'm going to say user the site password user the site password just make sure here in the users user that's fine okay yeah so user dot site password uh person i think i'm going to import this from here and so that's it now it will give me in that is site so site password now the password i'm going to encode it so i'm going to say encoder.encode what encoder am i using is going to be bcrypt encoder so i'm going to auto wire the encoder here as well auto wires i'm going to say private bcrypt bcrypt password encoder encoder so this is the encoder i'm going to use to encode the password before i save it so i'm going to say encoder dot encode and then specify the uh, passwords to the user dot get password so we encode the passwords of this user before we now save it so i'm going to say user repository dot save okay and specify the user okay all right, so this is how to save the user in the service. Um, so the next thing we want to do now is to go to the controller and uh, uh, implement the endpoint for our user. Uh, remember when we come from the register, the register is going to submit to slash users slash add new. So I'm going to go to the controller here, uh, not security controller, but the user controller. Uh, you it's going to be user controller so i need to add an endpoint is going to be a post mapping so it's going to be at post mapping i think it should be at post mapping so it's going to be at post, so i'm going to say uh post mapping and it's going to be slash user slash add new slash add new okay so I'm going to now add a new user from here. Now, to add a new user, we also need to uh, redirect as well. So I'm going to say public redirect, uh, sorry, not you. Redirect uh, view. And we now specify the name of the function. So instead of uh, returning a string or a template, we are going to return a redirect. So we need the user, takes the user and also it takes the a redirect attribute. The redirect attribute is more or less like a message, a success message, put it this way, that displays. So I'm going to say redirect, redirect attributes. And I'm going to call it Arborin. Uh, just, just call it this. Okay, so we are trying to now add a user, and once we add a user, we redirect to uh, the login page and then display a message that says you successfully logged in. So I'm going to call the user service to save this user. Before I call the user service, I need to auto wire the user service here. So I'm auto wire private user service user service and i'm going to say user service dot save user okay so having saved this user we now need to redirect to the login page because once someone registers you want to redirect to the login page and uh, display a success message, maybe registration successful or something like that. So I'm going to say redirect view. Redirect view, redirect view is equal to new redirect view and specify where you want to redirect to. And in this case, I'm redirecting to slash login. And I'm going to now specify true for context. For relative context because in this case both templates are in the same directory 
All right, so finally, uh, we are now going to um, add the uh, login, the, the, the success message. I'm going to simply say redirect, which is the success, uh, the attribute dot add flash attributes, and it's going to be a message. I'm going to explain it to you in a while, so I'm going to add a message. You have successfully registered a new user okay so and then we are going to now return redirect you so this is basically how to register a new user uh, let's test it first to make sure it works um, so i'm going to save i'm going to stop this application from running i'm going to save file save all first let me kind of uh, log into my sql from here i'm going to say my sql minus u uh, root minus p or dash p enter my password okay so if i say use fleet ms select uh, use fleet ms fleet db i mean select from user now we have only one user uh, right here which is uh, Kyson um, the username is me okay so let's go try to add a new user first let me run this application and then let's try to add a new user and see how this all plays out meanwhile this attribute called redirect attribute uh, is actually on the form so let me just show you before I test so if I go to register Okay, so you can see the message right here on uh, the login. So it will display in the login page after you register the display, the direct, direct message displays in the login page. All right, so let's go try to register a new user. So I'm going to click on back. Um, let's go to login. Let me just refresh this page for refreshing. And um, let me make sure that this still works. It still works. But now we're going to go, we are going to sign up and let's say I use the comma of nail and the username is and the comma and the password is the same password. Okay, so I'm now going to click on register. You can say it says you have successfully registered a new user. You can now sign in. All right, so let's go check the database table to see if actually the user is registered. So I'm going to go to the terminal and let's select from user. And you see that we now have two users have been added here. We have null in updating because this table is not updated. Uh, so but you can update it. But for now, you have a first name, last name, and username. So if I try to log in now with the user I created and we should be able to log in. So log in and you see that we're able to log in using that user I created. So this is how to add registration. Just a recap, let me just show you, tell you what we did. We had to make, we made sure we had a user repository. We made sure you had a user service and it contains the same method. Then in our user controller, we added the add new method which is a redirect view instead of a html template so i'm going to be stopping here uh, this is actually an added uh, path to spring security later on in the next video we are going to now be talking about role based authentication uh, role and privileges and how to restrict access to pages based on user role and privileges Again, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to my channel if you've not subscribed. Uh, leave me a comment if you have any challenges whatsoever following my tutorial. And I remain kind to the tech pro and I'm always there for you.